Okay, so we are now on tutorial 1.4 of the control system series, and in this one we are going to learn about block diagrams. So in 1.2 and 1.3 we learned about transfer functions and we learned about how to mathematically represent a, a system, and with the transfer functions we were able to create something that was actually useful. Now with block diagrams we can create something that is visually interesting and more, more valuable than interesting, also more intuitive than understanding and easier to switch things up. So with that, it's block diagrams are basically just a way to represent the system. And block diagrams are made up of multiple parts. So first we're going to start off with a block. Okay, so a block is pretty straightforward. You just have a, typically a rectangle, not a box for some reason, not a square, it's a rectangle. And this box represents a subsystem, a system, it can actually mean anything. And we usually just put something in there saying like G of S and say that G of S represents a transfer function. Now this is kind of a, a black box. Uh, you don't necessarily need to know what's inside of, inside of it to deal with the block diagram itself. And uh, you can put stuff in it and take stuff out of it and it's, it's pretty dynamic, honestly. But to keep things as simple as possible, we can just say for right now that this box or this block represents a system or a transfer function. Now, the box usually has arrows going to it or coming from it, uh, which basically is just representing inputs or outputs. So first we have the block and then we have the arrows which show things going in and out. So at this point, now we start to use summing points. So as we have some sort of input going into this G of S, we say, oh, you know, actually let's have two inputs. So we can create a circle here. And there's a couple of different ways to show this. You can just have a circle with a plus on the outside or you can have it where it's kind of, whoops, set up like that where you can put a plus on the inside. I don't really like that because that's a, that's a pain. So I usually like to see kind of a plus there and a, a minus there. And then if you have something coming in, you can say, okay, I've got one input here, and then let's say I have something going in here. Then whatever input is coming in from this direction, even though this is called a summing point, you can actually subtract here. You can say, I'm going to subtract from here. And this is gonna become important very soon. So you have the block, you have arrows that show inputs and outputs, basically the flow of where the information in the system is going. And then you have summing points, uh, where you can either add signals together or subtract them. And again, all of this is actually represented or represents a physical thing. And if it's mechanical or electrical, it can be different things, but like a, a plus and a minus. Adding something to a, a circuit could literally be as straightforward as a, an op amp set up in a summing amplifier, or it could be something else. So with that, you can also have feedback using what's called a takeoff point. So we have our input here to G of S, and we have our output here. But let's say, hey, we wanna take this and let's put it through another system here that then we feed back in. So we've talked about negative feedback sometimes, and it's, that's something where you can take a control system and make it a little bit more um, stable by getting rid of resonances and, and things like that. So with that, we can just assume that we're going to have in this, you don't even need a box here, but you can either run it through something else and we'll just call this H of S, even though that usually represents something else. Apologize for confusion. Or you could just have a direct output going back to this to give your system some negative feedback. Now, the interesting thing is you can kind of look at this in terms of how, like what is being carried on these signals. So you could say, hey, on this spot right here, this is basically the output of G sub S. And then this right here is going to be basically G sub S times H of S, something like that. And then right here, you could have your input, whatever that is, and that is your input. I'm just gonna be vague here. And then just say that's minus G sub S times H of S. So you can look at these arrows and the, the direction they are and kind of a, figure out what's going to be on each part of them. Now that's important because we are going to go over a little bit how you can simplify things because this is straightforward, but it gets complicated quickly if you get more complicated systems and, and that's the thing. Trying to keep this simple, but real life is quite complicated. And again, if you understand the concepts, then you can keep things under control. If you don't understand the concepts, then you can 
quickly get just completely demolished by everything. So remember your basics. So now that I add arrows here, like I should just to make this a little bit um, more correct. There we go. So you can see the flow of everything. Uh, I think we're actually ready to go into some simplification and some uh, ways of messing with this. And one of the fun things about this is I feel like as you go through and you simplify and you learn how you can move stuff around, it gives you a much better understanding of what's going on. So actually one final thing is I just want to say that each one of these boxes, even though I represent that G sub S or H of S and we could, if we wanted to, we could even say the input is R sub S, so that changes that or some stuff like that. You can literally also just put the transfer functions in there. So you could just have a box and have it say one over SC, something like that. So even though we use these to be fairly generic, you can, to make things a little bit easier to see exactly what's going on, put legitimate transfer function equations in there. Okay, so with that, let's talk about a couple of the things that we can do to simplify things or make things more complicated if we want to. And this isn't all inclusive, but it is uh, quite helpful. So one of the first things that we can do is we can simplify things by putting uh, two blocks together and it's quite straightforward. And I actually already kind of did it right here. So let's say you have your G sub S and then it goes over here to H of S and then you're going out. You can represent that by, or you can simplify it and create an equivalent diagram that says the exact same thing by saying G sub S times H of S. I should have given myself more space. And then it's an output there. Because again, remember, this is G sub S kind of right here. And then you're putting that into your H of S system. And so you're multiplying the two. So it's again, quite straightforward because you know that's what's coming out there. So you just put it into a box instead of making it a little bit less explicit in assuming what's going on out here. Okay, so that's our first thing. That's putting the blocks in cascade. So let me grab another piece of paper. Now, the second thing is if you have two blocks in parallel, so you have one up here, G sub S. Man, my chair is going crazy. I need to get a quieter chair and an H of S you can actually make it so that you are representing this because, again, just looking at it, you know that um, these are going to be, oh man, I messed up. I need to put a, a summing point there because you have to know how those are going together. Ha! See, that's an important thing. Again, knowing intuitively what you're doing makes it so that if you make a mistake like that, you can look at it and say, wait, that doesn't make sense because you can't just put two things together and like, well, I hope those added where they're supposed to subtract. If you're not sure, that means you screwed something up. So when I looked at that, I was like, wait, I definitely messed that up. So learn from my mistakes. Here we would represent this uh, G sub S plus H of S because they are coming to the summing point and going out and putting in some arrows. And so we could represent that by G sub S plus H sub S h of s, h of s. And that makes it that much more simple. So those are two very important ones uh, when they're in cascade, basically when they're multiplied together or when they're in parallel, in which case they are added together. All right, third example. Now this one actually gets quite a bit more complicated. So on this first page, we had this feedback loop. So if we took this feedback loop, if we want to get rid of this and make it all the same in just into one box. You can even see up here, I put the input minus G sub S times the H of S. It gets a little bit more complicated. So um, if you do a bunch of math, you can actually find that that just comes out to a separate thing. Maybe I should put this on here. On here. I don't know which one's going to be more clear. Oh, crud. I'm committing. I'm going to do it in this corner. The equivalent here would be just one box in which case you have G sub S because you have your original input or your original um, system. And then you are going to be over one plus or minus, because you got that, of the G sub S times H of S. Ho, 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 hopefully that's readable. 
Okay. And again, intuitively, that makes sense. You've got your original um, system, and then you are dividing it by the original input and plus or minus the combination of the two. And so this one, even though it's more complicated mathematically than our cascade and our parallel, since this is so common, it does make sense to go over this because you'll probably see this quite a bit um, when you're dealing with control systems. So that is the third thing, and that is how you simplify a feedback loop. So number four, for this one, we are going to assume you have a single system that then goes out I am terrible about making sure that I use my arrows out like that. Now we want to move this takeoff point over to here. So the way to do this, it's actually quite straightforward because again, we've talked about it. This right here is G sub S and we know that this right here is G sub S. So if we want to move this takeoff point over here, all we have to do is go like this because we need that to be G sub S when it's outputting something. And now that we've moved this takeoff point to the left, we just need to make sure that we put G sub S right there so that again, we have G sub S and G of S right there. And uh, that's where it comes in. That's where the intuitiveness helps because you understand that this is representing whatever the input is times G sub S and then this gives you the same thing. So if it makes sense looking at it, then you're doing it right. If it doesn't, then you're probably not. And frankly, it means you either don't understand the concept, in which it's great to go back and study, or you're doing it wrong, in which case you need to fix it. So either way, if it doesn't make sense, figure it out. Okay, I, unfortunately, I have a, quite a few more that I want to go over, but this video is already getting painfully long, and so I do want to keep it a little bit shorter. So I think I'll just do one more example and then just refer you to Kushal's exam, um, written tutorial where he has all of the other examples that are again are fantastic because he just does a fantastic job, and uh, yeah, let's 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 do that really quick. The final example is I'm going to I'm going to do the inverse. So imagine that I have G sub S right here, and it has an output, and it has a takeoff point going right there. Okay, now if I want to move this takeoff point over here, you got to remember that this is G sub S, and this is whatever this input is. So if I want to move that over there, let's take this G sub S, and then we still have that, so that's still going to be G sub S right there. But now we want to get rid of it right here, so we do one over G sub S. There we go. So now we have G sub S as the output here, G sub S is the, of the output here, and then we have whatever input is here, and we have whatever input is here because we are basically canceling these two out by moving that over. So that is just moving that takeoff point left and right. Now you can do the same thing with summing points and with the subtraction, you can shift them to the left or the right. You can, again, do the parallel, the cascade, all that sort of stuff. And this is important when you're getting into a lot more complicated um, systems where you would rather simplify it. Okay, so that is just a couple of ways to look at block diagrams, and again, Kushal's written tutorial, go check it out, it's awesome. But I just wanna review what we talked about today, and that is basically that these block diagrams are just a way to show the, the flow of information, to, to show how the systems integrate, and you can have a transfer function that is just represented by an arrow into a box and an arrow out, and that's great, and that's one visual representation. But since most systems work with each other, you can show the feedback, you can show it feeding in from one to another, and you can do a lot more stuff. And it's a lot easier to work with visually. So we have our blocks that represent those systems or subsystems, our arrows which show the flow of information, our summing points where we can either add or subtract any incoming input, and then we have all of these little tips and tricks of how we can move these things around and still have the same mathematically equivalent system. Hope you liked this. If you did, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, go check out Kushal's written tutorial. I cannot emphasize that enough. He does a fantastic job. Go check it out. Take care. Have a great day.